Atlanta Braves fans, how would you like to meet your all-star second baseman and World Series champion, Ozzy Albies? Well, now you can on Saturday, November 16th at PBR Battery Atlanta from noon to 2 p.m. Join us for an exclusive meet and greet where you can meet Ozzy, get an autograph, and snap a few selfies. Tickets are going fast and will sell out quickly, so get yours today at morethansports.com and click on the signings tab. That's morethansports.com and click on the signings tab. Don't miss your chance to meet Ozzy Albies Saturday, November 16th at PBR Battery Atlanta. Extra 1063 and a second chance bail bonds are here to back your blue. Back Your Blue highlights special initiatives, criminal justice programs, and community events aimed at keeping our communities safer. Join a Second Chance Bail Bond CEO, Daniel Matalon, and host Tug Coward to learn some good news about and from the law enforcement and justice communities. Now it's time to Back Your Blue on Extra 106.3 FM and the Extra 106.3 app. This is Back Your Blue on Extra 106.3. My name is Tug Coward, along with Daniel Madelon. He is the CEO of Second Chance Bail Bonds and a Second Chance Monitoring. Our guest today is Melanie Kagan. She is the CEO for the Center for Family Resources in Marietta, Georgia. This thing was established back in 1960. Cobb County-based organization works exclusively with severe, um, uh, to serve rather, uh, local families who are either homeless or in danger of becoming homeless. And um, they've been the lead agency and collaborative applicant for the Georgia 506 Marietta and Cobb Continuum of Care, now the Cobb Homeless Alliance. Melanie, thank you so much for being here. Sure, thanks for having me. Oh, my goodness. So you got so much to do because I feel like right now with the way the economy is and there's just – it feels like there's tough times right now. And um, – and and I think that's affecting people. You can see it affect people. W- would you agree with that? Oh, yeah, absolutely. It doesn't take much when people are already living sort of paycheck to paycheck. Um, our families tend to be thrown off pretty quickly by unexpected things like a car that stops working or a medical bill that comes up. And we're seeing a lot of people that are coming into our office that have never had to reach out and ask for help before. So. Wow. Do you see reluctance in that? Is it because people are embarrassed or they don't know who to call or or, or is it a combination? It's a combination. Um, some people try to be very proactive, you know, so they're reaching out right away. You know, they know they can't make rent this month, so they're trying to find anything that will help before they get behind. Others wait because they are. They're embarrassed. They don't know where to go. They they don't think it's the right thing to do to be asking for assistance. It gets a little harder the longer you go, I will say, because it's much harder to dig people out of a three-month hole than it is a one-month hole. Um, and then sometimes, you know, if you wait too long, you are actually being evicted. put out. Yeah, yeah. evicted. And then and then that's an even harder thing to solve. I can only imagine. Holy smokes. And uh, this time of year, because... I've already heard people talking about the holidays. I've heard people talking about Thanksgiving and uh, and Christmas. And and I'll be honest, here in the office that you're in at Dickey Broadcasting, back mid September is when the Halloween stuff went up. I'm like, what? What? That's what's going early. on? It's too early. I have a rule: it can't happen before October first. Right. You just can't move on to the holiday until the month of the holiday. Right, Melanie, that, <laughs> because that's logical. That makes right. sense. That's what normal people do Especially around here. When the holiday is the last day of the month. Exactly. You have a whole month. We don't need a month and a half. <laughs> we don't need two months. But Daniel, are y'all decorating already? Uh, no, no. Okay, good. No, good. That I, makes me feel better. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> but I, I'm sure it's coming soon. Although well, yeah, I don't coming get, soon actually, makes sense. Although I don't make those decisions anymore, so okay. therefore, I, you know. You've, it, you've admonished yourself from it. I'm like, I'm not handling this anymore. If, if I walk in there, I, I, yeah, I'm not going to pretend like well, that. Says, he would have no idea. No idea. Way it goes. He, <laughs> he wouldn't even notice if there was a giant skeleton in front of the yard. Would not. You know, wouldn't even cross it. He wouldn't even hit his New radar. Edition, sure. <laughs> I would notice a 30-foot skeleton. <laughs> you know? I mean, like one of those. have you seen those from Home Depot? Yeah. Goodness gracious. They're huge. They're gigantic. Okay. Yeah, here in our office, you're exactly right. Here in our office is being pointed out that we have a like a, a, witch, have a witch thing, and she's been up there for. She's flying. She is. I know. I don't yeah. know if you know. Yeah, yeah. It, yep. I, did, I didn't realize that it was real, but it is. And uh, yeah, she's floating around. She's been up there for about four weeks now. So I don't know. Um, yeah. I mean, they try to get their use out of it around here. Do they I, decorate for Christmas starting yeah. right after Halloween? Is that what? <laughs> is that where we go? Yes, ma'am. Okay. Yes, well, it's you know, absurd. I don't know what's about. And you know what the crazy thing is? This is a predominantly male office, and I know we're way off topic, but this is something that bothers me, and I feel like I got to get it off my chest. And now's the opportunity to do it, so I'm going to do it. 
we have dudes in here that dress up for Halloween like the like their children, which is odd to me. I think that's odd. And then they decorate this place like we're in like a like a crazy house. You know, I mean, this is what happens around here. I walk in and there's witches flying around. I, I just want to do my work. Can I just sit at my desk and do my work? I don't need the witch flying around. I don't need a, a bucket of candy. I don't need a Christmas tree. I have a Christmas tree at home. Yeah. <laughs> Not Sorry. Where, the office is not where you come for your inspiration for the holidays. Not typically. Not typically. <laughs> but we have so many dudes around here that get so in. They're like Clark Griswold almost. That is amazing. I mean, it's unbelievable. <laughs> they would put 25,000 Italian twinkle lights in here if they could. <laughs> You know, and and unfortunately they can't. So, uh, but they would like to. They would like to align every office, every cubicle. It'd be crazy. Anyway, back to what you do. Great movie reference, by the way. <laughs> Thank you very much. I'm glad you picked up on. I did. It. <laughs> Fifteen years of experience in the nonprofit sector, working primarily in leadership positions, including fundraising, policy and advocacy, nonprofit management, and program oversight. That seems like a heavy task. <laughs> it is, but I think in most nonprofits, all of us do a little bit of everything. So you just sort of acquire skills as yeah. you go through. But, Absolutely. And, and yeah. it probably serves you well in other places in life, it, I would imagine. It does. It Raising does. families and things like that. Just anything. You, <laughs> I mean, most nonprofit executives can transition to a lot of different industries because you kind of have your hands in anything. So. Before you joined the uh, Center for Family Resources, you spent two years in the uh, as the uh, Northwest Regional Director of the United Way of Greater Atlanta. Uh, you oversaw Cherokee, Cobb, Douglas, and Paulding counties, and, and prior to moving here to Georgia, were with Big, Bo- Big Brothers and Big Sisters in New Mexico, uh, United Way of Central Mexico, uh, Central New Mexico, and then um, then you moved into the nonprofit sector, working in healthcare administration. Yeah. I mean, that experience in and of itself is so valuable to the people that you serve. I would imagine because, you, like you said, you're able to recognize any problem, deal with any problem. It doesn't matter if it's a healthcare issue or a uh, legal issue or whatever the issue is. It's like you have experience in all of it. Yeah, we, yeah, you pick up a little bit of everything as you go along. Like I said, nonprofits, we all pick up sort of whatever needs to get done. So you learn a lot as you go. But um, as I've progressed in leadership, I've gotten to do everything from real estate transactions to contracts. So I, usually what I say is that CEO is a fancy title for someone who has to sign a lot of paperwork. Okay. All right. Pretty much, yeah. pretty much what I find. Yeah, mm-hmm. it's true. Looks good truth. on a car, Yeah, though. it's great. It is a great A lot title. of truth to that. Yeah, yeah. That's right. Daniel, I feel like you're, uh, you feel like, you know how I vented about the decorating? I feel like you want to vent now about the being a CEO. And having yeah, because it's, because it's, yeah, yeah. We don't need to, we don't <laughs> need to. <laughs> Yeah, like, I better not. go down, yeah. you're going down with it. That's right. Absolutely. Yeah. And yeah. if things are great, it's it's everybody else's great. Right? <laughs> exactly kind of right. How it works. It, if everything's going great, you're doing great. And the yeah, minute things have a, a hiccup or bump, it's all yep, your fault. Absolutely. It's not the chain, you know, it's not the chain of command that, that yeah. came before that. It is absolutely your fault. It's That's unbelievable. leadership, though. Yeah, leadership. I guess it is. I guess it is. <laughs> but um, what, what was it that made you decide at whatever point you did that, that nonprofit was the way to go for you? Uh, I sort of accidentally fell into nonprofit. I was working like in, it was a trap. Yeah, it kind of is. <laughs> <laughs> um, You're yeah. running like Wiley Coyote, and there's just <laughs> there's just a big old net, that, and they drug you in. Yeah, goodness, kind Grace. of. Um, I was in healthcare, so I was doing healthcare administration. When I was young, I got I had a lot of great opportunities as a young professional, and I had a lot of good mentors, and so I sort of rose up in the ranks and had management positions very early. Um, at one point, probably not quite equipped to have the roles that I did, but I, I worked. But I benefited from it. I, I did. I did. And I worked very hard, um, but I probably a little too hard. And there are some companies that will fully take advantage of people who work really hard. Amen. I and know that feeling. So I, um, I found myself at a point I had two small children. I ended up becoming um, a single mom. I got divorced. And so I was working 70 hours a week kids. and I was missing everything, right? Because I was, my kids would go to field trips or have projects to do and I couldn't go. I couldn't leave my office. I was at my office all the time, day in and day out. And it was just a lot of um, policy and administration of things. And I kind of got, I met the realization that I, it could have been anybody, right? It wasn't a me thing. Like I could have left that organization and been replaced in a heartbeat and I don't I didn't feel like I was making a big impact on anything I was just kind of checking boxes and I didn't love it and so I left that job and then uh, somebody said you should go try to be a fundraiser and I didn't realize that there was an avenue of people who got paid to go ask people for money um <laughs> and that a lot of people really hate that and don't want to do it and I'm one of those yeah, I see? like when my kids <laughs> yeah when my kids like when you're in school you know you have to fundraise for whatever the field trip is or the ball team that you play on 
My wife and I would just cut the check. Yeah. You Please know? don't ask me yeah. to ask anybody else. I just, I refuse to ask anybody yeah. for money. I just, I'm not comfortable with it. And the fact that some people are is good because there are people are that are willing and recognize an issue that they can help, much like you're describing, yeah. and are able to cut a check and they like doing that. And, yeah. and, and, and it's beneficial to their company, whether for good press or tax write off. I mean, there's a, a myriad, yeah. or maybe they just believe in the cause. Yeah. Yeah, it's and it takes all kinds, right? So yeah, I need the, I kinds. need the people to write the checks, but I also need people that are going to help us go ask other people. So I started raising money for United Way. Um, I was married to the cause. I really love the opportunity to support so many different organizations. And then I realized that I really love nonprofit, and I got to know a little bit about a bunch of them. And I got I was choosy. I got to pick and choose kind of where I went because I had such a good in depth kind of working knowledge of how a lot of our organizations were set up. Um, so when I went to Big Brothers Big Sisters, it was because I was just so in love with their mission. I think mentorship is huge, and it was such a good opportunity. And then we picked up and moved to Georgia. So I had to start over again. There you go. Well, it's a good place to be, and and I hope you're enjoying your your time here. I'm born and raised here, so I I love it like no nothing else in the world. But um, you were honored as both a woman of influence in 2016 and a 40 under 40 young professional in 2017 by the Albuquerque Business Journal, recognized in 2020 as a top 20 in their 40s by Cobb Life Magazine, and in 2021. A woman of achievement by Live Safe Resources, uh, leadership Cobb alumni from the class of 2019, and is a 2023 RLI graduate. That is the Atlanta Regional Commission's Leadership Institute. Again, a lot of accolades, a lot of uh, uh, well, but I mean, they sound. I've never been called anything except bad names. <laughs> <laughs> so, so, like, well, to get all those accolades is very nice. I would it's imagine better than the bad stuff. Yeah, I'll, I'll, I list the good stuff. <laughs> yeah, I've been called dummy and uh, knucklehead, and I've answered to a lot worse than tug. You know, so I mean, there's a lot there. When we come back on Extra 106.3, we'll talk about the uh, Center for Family Resources, the variety of programs from pre- uh, prevention to shelter and housing supports, life skills, the financial literacy stuff that y'all do, the on-site food pantries, how Daniel got involved with a second chance bail bonds and a second chance monitoring. All that is coming up as our guest is Melanie Kagan, CEO for the Center for Family Resources. We will uh, continue next here on Extra 106.3. Hi, this is Brad Akins. By now you've heard about the tragedy at Appalachia High School. While the outpouring of support has been incredible, the needs of those affected by this event are overwhelming. And we need your help. The Bear Community Crisis Fund is leading the efforts to collect, manage, and distribute resources for the community's recovery initiatives. Join me and let's make a difference in the lives of those affected by the tragedy at Appalachia High School. Your donation, no matter the size, will help support those families in need. Please donate today at bearcommunityfoundation.org. Org. Fall is here and it's time for football and time for entertainment, which means it's time for you to check out Underdog, the place for fantasy picks and entertainment. You need your enjoyment to be easy, and that's why Underdog is a perfect place to go for pick 'em entries, entering fantasy contests. I'll be looking at the hire of Kirk Cousins, passing yards, and touchdown projections all year long. With Underdog, you have a smooth process that leads to easy and fast play. Making picks on Underdog is straightforward, and signing up is even easier. Just head over to Underdog's simple-to-use mobile app or underdogfantasy.com. Sign up with promo code LEAK, and Underdog will give you a free pick to use on your first pick'em entry, plus up to $1,000 in bonus cash when you deposit. That's Underdog Fantasy promo code LEAK to claim your new customer special of a free pick and your deposit offer. Must be 18 plus and present in a state where Underdog Fantasy operates. Terms apply. Concerned with your play? Call 1-800-GAMBLER or visit ncpgambling.org. This is Back Your Blue, presented by a Second Chance Bail Bonds, live on Extra 106.3 FM and streaming for free anytime on the Extra 106.3 app. Welcome back. Final segment of Back Your Blue on Extra 106.3 with Daniel Madelon. He is the CEO of a Second Chance Bail Bonds and a Second Chance Monitoring. And our guest, Melanie Kagan. She's the CEO for the Center for Family Resources. My name is Tug. Glad that you're here. Appreciate you spending time with us. Uh, I want to talk about, uh, Melanie, the recent partnership with law enforcement for unsheltered point-in-time count. 
That's a mouthful, and I have <laughs> no idea what that means. Yeah, we call it the pit count. Um, oh, well, I like, made a note of that. <laughs> It's uh, so we are funded largely through HUD projects, so okay. the um, housing and urban development through yes, the government. Ma'am. So they set some rules, um, and they ask for some statistics. So the way that they sort of track homelessness across the country, which if you've seen, all of the numbers are up. It's um, anywhere between a thirteen and seventeen percent increase in unsheltered homelessness over the last two years. Um, so the way they track it is through all of these different entities state by state that do what they call the point in time count. So it is one night in January. I'm pretty sure that they choose January because it's colder and they're hoping most states can get people in warming shelters because they're brought inside when it's cold. Um, in Georgia, the end of January could be anywhere from 30 degrees <laughs> to 60 degrees. Just it just depends. depends, right? So, um, so it's one night at the end of January. We have to go out and actually survey and talk to um, our unsheltered homeless. So people we see uh, under overpasses, Overpasses, camping out in the woods, um, under bridges, walking around. And it's supposed to be from sundown to sunup. So we go usually around 7 or 8 o'clock at night um, in the winter. So it's not my favorite thing. It's a little dicey, if you can imagine. I would imagine that you probably feel relatively uncomfortable and unsafe at moments. And it's it's volunteers. I mean, we get a huge group of volunteers together to do this, and we train them. But we wouldn't be able to do it without law enforcement. So this year in particular, we had a wonderful partnership with our law enforcement partners across Cobb County. So every jurisdiction responded to our call. Every single city, the county. PD. Um, it was it was great, and we had um, a chief Van Hoosier's support and director register support from the safety office, and so it was really it was a g- great um, showing, I think, of everybody. And the goal was is not to get anybody in trouble, right? We're not going out to have people arrested or to do anything. We're literally just going out to talk to them and get a count of how many people we have on our streets at one point in time so that we send that to HUD. And that is how they base a lot of their data for funding um, and other resources across the state. So um, Fulton County does it. um, City of Atlanta does it. Like a lot of jurisdictions do it and are in charge of doing it for their county or their area. Um, So they have a really interesting tool. It's a GIS tracking tool that they use to sort of pinpoint um, homeless camps. And that's mostly for safety reasons. If there are fires, if sure. there, you know, if something's happening and they need to know how to evacuate people or where to go to get people, that is a tool that is available to them now. But we all sat around um, for a couple hours the weeks before, and we really identified exactly where we needed to go. And we deployed groups of three or four with a law enforcement partner, um, and we canvassed the whole county. And we were able to, in about three hours, we were able to cover the whole county. Um, and we got some really good data and some really good information, and we couldn't have done it without our law enforcement partners. They're wonderful. And they know more, honestly, about our street homeless than most of us do. Well, because, because they, they see, see it. Them. Yeah, yeah, all the time. They're with them um, more than any of us. They're the ones that get the calls. Uh, and, you know, unfortunately, they have to respond the way they respond because they're upholding the law, right? So what's legal and what's not? And they're rarely going to you know, try to get these folks in trouble. And they do try to find them services whenever possible. It's just not always possible. But they're called. They have to respond. They come and talk to people. And so it was good. It was great. It was a wonderful partnership. It's continuing. We've been working with them to identify some of our folks that are at risk, some of our encampments that need to be either moved or you know how we can move people along into a service spectrum so that they're not living on the streets and they've been great they've been great partners for us what about the uh thanks for giving program because i heard you talk about it a a little bit in the beginning and i want to go back to it uh explain to me what it is and and what you know how how do people get involved whether they need help or can volunteer yep yep we have um you know, there's a whole week of school out, um, the week of Thanksgiving, and we have a lot of kiddos that rely on their free and reduced lunches. And so we started this, again, 38 years ago. We do a big food drive, and we pack boxes for our families that basically has a, all the staples they need for the whole week, in addition to all the things they need to make a Thanksgiving meal at home. We really try to empower our families to do things their way and to do it at home where they can be safe and you know with their families um we give them gift cards we don't do turkeys or anything that is perishable because that gets really sticky but we give 
them gift cards to go figure out what else they need. Sometimes they use those gift cards for gas, and that's what they need at the time, right? So, um, so we pack about a thousand boxes. So we take volunteers all week to come work with us, and then starting now all the way through November, um, anybody who wants to do a food drive. Um, we have about 50 companies that work with us and about 50 or 60 schools that will run food drives for us as well. Um, and it's just a giant display of support. We have probably somewhere around 60,000 pounds of food that end up getting delivered, and we divvy that up. We work with Cobb Senior Services. We work with some of our partner agencies that have um, programs of people in-house, um, and we get those boxes out to everybody in need. So we're working largely with the schools this year to do direct distribution where we can. It makes it a lot easier. They're heavy boxes. They're about yeah. 50 or 60 pounds so not everybody can walk around with one yeah try to get that on the school bus yeah exactly so transportation becomes a factor and um we're in marietta but we serve all of cobb but folks in south cobb have a hard time getting up to us sometimes so we're trying to distribute directly from their schools out to them so and and i would imagine that's probably where y'all are heavily involved daniel right yep we've got a lot of different agencies we do a lot of stuff with cobb sheriff's department also um I mean, so many different people we're working with, but yeah, no, that's that's totally something up our speed yep. that we would we would participate in for sure. How do um, like if somebody wants to volunteer, like if there's a company listening right now that's like, this is right where my heart is. Yeah. How how can I be like a second chance and and jump in and volunteer or jump in and donate uh, or both? Yep. Um, our website is www.thecfr.org. Thecfr.org. The C- yep. And um, all of the information on there, we have an events page, and the Thanks for Giving is our current event, so it is highlighted. Um, there's an email. Um, there's links to both the sponsorship page, the food lists that we ask for. Um, you can sign up for a food drive on our website. It's just a form you fill out, and someone will be in touch with you. Um, and then volunteers. We haven't published the list yet for volunteers. We will do that later this month. Um, but it happens the week before Thanksgiving, so that Monday through Saturday, which I believe is the 16th through the 22nd, I think. I'm going to take your word for it. Yep. Well, somewhere <laughs> right around there. Um, you can come all week long um, and help at the, we're at the local lodge near KSU's South Campus, the Marietta Campus. Mm-hmm. Um, and we are there all week. So all that information on our website and we will take people uh, however they want to help. That's go. where I saw the information. It was on the website. See, there I was you on, go. Hold on. No, no, no. I was on the now CFR. I was on the CFR.org <laughs> yeah. last night. And that's where I found it. See, I gotta tell you, nothing gets that by was, this that was driving me nuts. Uh, and I was like, as she said it, I'm like, that's, I was on that website that's last night. Where I was. That's where I saw the fun. That's where I saw the it. funding. There you Dude, go. Mission I tell you. accomplished. <laughs> that's a good solved. That's it. good work right there. Nothing. I mean, he's like Inspector Gadget over here. <laughs> nothing getting by Daniel Madelon. <laughs> nothing. <laughs> Uh, so He's good. Gonna wake wow. up at two in the morning thinking of that if he didn't get it. I now. know, right? Isn't that the worst though when you can't figure out where you saw oh, something it, it and you as spend... she started talking? I was like, "That's I, it. That's it. That's I where I saw yeah. the the funding, and I saw." Yeah. It's it's just one of our it's a fundraiser but it's also for the food part so it's a sure. food raiser and a fundraiser and a friend raiser because we get volunteers through that as well but it's one of a few fundraisers that we do through the year. There you go, Melanie. Thank you so much for what you do and thank you for coming on the show and sharing it with all of the listeners to uh, to back your blue. Thank you. Yeah, thank you guys. Uh, Daniel, obviously, so much uh, we have to be uh, appreciative for the fact that we do the show. If it weren't for you, like many of the programs that we talk to, mm-hmm. without you and your team, we wouldn't be doing this either. So thank you, of course, for uh, being the uh, the reason that we do Back Your Blue here on Extra 106.3. Atlanta Braves fans, how would you like to meet your all-star second baseman and World Series champion, Ozzy Albies? Well, now you can on Saturday, November 16th at PBR Battery Atlanta from noon to 2 p.m. Join us for an exclusive meet and greet where you can meet Ozzy, get an autograph, and snap a few selfies. Tickets are going fast and will sell out quickly, so get yours today at morethansports.com and click on the signings tab. That's morethansports.com and click on the signings tab. Don't miss your chance to meet Ozzy Albies Saturday, November 16th at PBR PBR Battery Atlanta. My friends, well, you might say they're a little different. We know how to have a good time, sure, but together, what we get is beyond just that. Los Linderos is the tequila that fits, that works for those times we have. The times that take fun and friendship and go beyond. Give it a try. Los Linderos tequila. I keep an eye out for that sculpted bottle. It's as beautiful on the outside as on the inside. 
Kinda like my friends. Los Linderos Tequila. When it's time to go beyond. Extra 106.3 and a second chance bail bonds are here to back your blue. Now back to the show on Atlanta's only conservative news and talk station. Extra 106.3. Welcome back. Final segment of Back Your Blue on Extra 106.3 with Daniel Madelon. He is the CEO of a second chance bail bonds and a second chance monitoring. And our guest, Melanie Kagan. She's the CEO for the Center for Family Resources. My name is Tug. Glad that you're here. Appreciate you spending time with us. Uh, I want to talk about, uh, Melanie, the recent partnership with law enforcement for unsheltered point in time count. That's a mouthful, and I have (laughs) no idea what that means. Yeah, we call it the pit count. Um, Oh, well, let me make a note of that. (laughs) It's uh, so we are funded largely through HUD projects, so okay. the um, housing and urban development through yes, the government. Ma'am. So they set some rules, um, and they ask for some statistics. So the way that they sort of track homelessness across the country, which if you've seen, all of the numbers are up. It's um, anywhere between a 13 and 17 percent increase in unsheltered homelessness over the last two years. Um, so the way they track it is through all of these different entities state by state that do what they call the point in time count. So it is one night in January. I'm pretty sure that they choose January because it's colder and they're hoping most states can get people in warming shelters because they're brought inside when it's cold. Um, in Georgia, the end of January could be anywhere from 30 degrees <laughs> to 60 degrees. Just, it just depends. depends, right? So, um, so it's one night at the end of January. We have to go out and actually survey and talk to um, our unsheltered homeless. So people we see uh, under overpasses, camping out in the woods, um, under bridges, walking around. And it's supposed to be from sundown to sunup. So we go usually around 7 or 8 o'clock at night um, in the winter. So it's not my favorite thing. It's a little dicey, if you can imagine. I would imagine that you probably feel relatively uncomfortable and unsafe at moments. And it's it's volunteers. I mean, we get a huge group of volunteers together to do this, and we train them, but we wouldn't be able to do it without law enforcement. So this year in particular, we had a wonderful partnership with our law enforcement partners across Cobb County. So every jurisdiction responded to our call. Every single city, the county, PD. Um, it was it was great, and we had um, a Chief Van Hoosier support and Director Register support from the Safety Office, and so it was really it was a great um, showing, I think, of everybody. And the goal was is not to get anybody in trouble, right? We're not going out to have people arrested or to do anything. We're literally just going out to talk to them and get a count of how many people we have on our streets at one point in time so that we send that to HUD. And that is how they base a lot of their data for funding um, and other resources across the state. So um, Fulton County does it. Um, City of Atlanta does it. Like a lot of jurisdictions do it and are in charge of doing it for their county or their area. Um, So they have a really interesting tool. It's a GIS tracking tool that they use to sort of pinpoint um, homeless camps. And that's mostly for safety reasons. If there are fires, if sure. there, you know, if something's happening and they need to know how to evacuate people or where to go to get people, that is a tool that is available to them now. But we all sat around um, for a couple hours the weeks before, and we really identified exactly where we needed to go. And we deployed groups of three or four with a law enforcement partner, um, and we canvassed the whole county. And we were able to, in about three hours, we were able to cover the whole county. Um, and we got some really good data and some really good information, and we couldn't have done it with Without our law enforcement partners they're wonderful and they know more honestly about our street homeless than most of us do well, because, because they, they see, see it them. yeah, yeah all they... the time they're with them um more than any of us they're the ones that get the calls uh, and you know unfortunately they have to respond the way they respond because they're upholding the law right so what's legal and what's not and they're rarely going to you know try to get these folks in trouble and they do try to find them services whenever possible it's just not always possible but they're called they have to respond they come and talk to people and so it was good it was great it was a wonderful partnership it's continuing we've been working with them to identify some of our folks that are at risk some of our encampments that need to be either moved Moved or you know how we can move people along into a service spectrum so that they're not living on the streets and they've been great they've been great partners for us what about the uh thanks for giving program because i heard you talk about it a, a little bit in the beginning and i want to go back to it uh explain to me what it is and and what you know how, how do people get involved whether they need help or can volunteer yep yep we have <clears throat> um you know, there's a whole week of school out. 
um, the week of Thanksgiving, and we have a lot of kiddos that rely on their free and reduced lunches. And so we started this, again, 38 years ago. We do a big food drive, and we pack boxes for our families that basically has a, all the staples they need for the whole week, in addition to all the things they need to make a Thanksgiving meal at home. We really try to empower our families to do things their way and to do it at home where they can be safe and you know with their families um, we give them gift cards we don't do turkeys or anything that is perishable because that gets really sticky but we give them gift cards to go figure out what else they need sometimes they use those gift cards for gas and that's what they need at the time right so um, so we pack about a thousand boxes so we take volunteers all week to come work with us and then starting now all the way through November um, anybody who wants to do a food drive um, we have about 50 companies that work with us and about 50 or 60 schools that will run food drives for us as well. Um, and it's just a giant display of support. We have probably somewhere around 60,000 pounds of food that end up getting delivered, and we divvy that up. We work with Cobb Senior Services. We work with some of our partner agencies that have um, programs of people in-house, um, and we get those boxes out to everybody in need. So we're working largely with the schools this year to do direct distribution where we can. It makes it a lot easier. They're heavy boxes. They're about yeah. 50 or 60 pounds, Goodness. so not everybody can walk around with one. Yeah, try um, and get that on the school bus. Yeah, exactly. So transportation becomes a factor. And um, we're in Marietta, but we serve all of Cobb, but folks in South Cobb have a hard time getting up to us sometimes. Times, so we're trying to distribute directly from their schools out to them. So, and and I would imagine that's probably where y'all are heavily involved, Daniel. Right? Yep, we've got a lot of different agencies. We do a lot of stuff with Cobb Sheriff's Department, also. Um, I mean, so many different people we're working with. But yeah, no, that's some, that's totally something up our speed yep. that we would we would participate in for sure. How do um, like if somebody wants to volunteer? Like if there's a company listening right now that's like this is right where my heart is. Yeah. How how can I be like a second chance and and jump in and volunteer or jump in and donate or both? Yep. Um, our website is www.thecfr.org. Thecfr.org. The C- yep. And um, all of the information on there, we have an events page, and the Thanks for Giving is our current event, so it is highlighted. Um, there's an email. Um, there's links to both the sponsorship page, the food lists that we ask for. Um, you can sign up for a food drive on our website. It's just a form you fill out, and someone will be in touch with you. Um, and then volunteers. We haven't published the list yet for volunteers. We will do that later this month. Um, but it happens the week before Thanksgiving, so that Monday through Saturday, which I believe is the 16th through the 22nd, I think. I'm going to take your word for it. Yep. Well, somewhere right around there. Um, you can come all week long um, and help at the, we're at the local lodge near KSU's South Campus, the Marietta Campus. Mm-hmm. Um, and we are there all week. So all that information on our website and we will take people uh, however they want to help. That's go. where I saw the information. It was on the website. See, there I was you on, go. Hold on. No, no, no. I was on the now CFR. I was on the CFR.org last yeah. night and that's where I found it. See, I got to tell you, nothing gets that was, that was driving me nuts. I, I was <laughs> Like as she said it, I'm like, that, I was on that website that's last night. Where I was. That's where I saw the. Fu- I that's where I saw the funding. It. There you Dude, go. Mission you. accomplished. <laughs> that's a good solve. That's it. good work right there. Nothing. I mean, he's like Inspector Gadget over here. <laughs> Nothing getting by Daniel Madelon. <laughs> Nothing. <laughs> <laughs> so He's good. Gonna wake wow. up at two in the morning thinking of that if he didn't get it. Now. I know, right? Isn't that the worst though when you can't figure out where you saw oh, something it, it and you as spend... she started talking? I was like, that's I, it. That's it. That's I where I saw yeah. the the funding and I saw. Yeah. It's it's answers. just one of our it's a fundraiser but it's also for the food part so it's a sure. food raiser and a fundraiser and a friend raiser because we get volunteers through that as well but it's one of a few fundraisers that we do through the year. There you go, Melanie. Thank you so much for what you do and thank you for coming on the show and sharing it with all of the listeners to uh, to back your blue. Thank you. Yeah, thank you guys. Uh, Daniel, obviously, so much uh, we have to be uh, appreciative for the fact that we do the show. If it weren't for you, like many of the programs that we talk to, mm-hmm. without you and your team, we wouldn't be doing this either. So thank you, of course, for uh, being the uh, the reason that we do Back Your Blue here on Extra 106.3. Fall is here, and it's time for football and time for entertainment, which means it's time for you to check out Underdog, the place for fantasy picks and entertainment. You need your enjoyment to be easy, and that's why Underdog is a perfect place to go for pick'em entries entering fantasy contests. I'll be looking at the hire of Kirk Cousins, passing yards, and touchdown projections all year long. With Underdog, you have a smooth process that leads to easy and fast play. Making picks on Underdog is straightforward, and signing up is even easier. Just 
over to Underdog's simple-to-use mobile app or underdogfantasy.com. Sign up with promo code LEAK, and Underdog will give you a free pick to use on your first pick'em entry, plus up to $1,000 in bonus cash when you deposit. That's Underdog Fantasy promo code LEAK to claim your new customer special of a free pick and your deposit offer. Must be 18 plus and present in a state where Underdog Fantasy operates. Terms apply. Concerned with your play? Call 1-800-GAMBLER or visit ncpgambling.org. Atlanta Braves fans, how would you like to meet your all-star second baseman and World Series champion, Ozzie Albies? Well, now you can on Saturday, November 16th at PBR Battery Atlanta from noon to 2 p.m. Join us for an exclusive meet and greet where you can meet Ozzie, get an autograph, and snap a few selfies. Tickets are going fast and will sell out quickly, so get yours today at morethansports.com and click on the signings tab. That's morethansports.com and click on the signings tab. Don't miss your chance to meet Ozzie Albies Saturday, November 16th at PBR. PBR Battery Atlanta. My friends, well, you might say they're a little different. We know how to have a good time, sure, but together, what we get is beyond just that. Los Linderos is the tequila that fits, that works for those times we have. The times that take fun and friendship and go beyond. Give it a try. Los Linderos tequila. I keep an eye out for that sculpted bottle. It's as beautiful on the outside as on the inside. Kind of like my friends, Los Linderos Tequila, when it's time to go beyond. 